The fifth similitude, or parable, of true fasting and its reward, also of purity of body. Chapter 1. While fasting and sitting on a certain mountain, and giving thanks to the Lord for all his dealings with me, I see the shepherd sitting down beside me and saying, Why have you come here so early in the morning? Because, sir, I answered, I have a station. What is a station? he asked. I am fasting, sir, I replied. What is this fasting, he continued, which you are observing? As I have been accustomed, sir, I reply, so I fast. Do you not know, says he, how to fast unto the Lord? This useless fasting which you observe to him is of no value. Why, sir, I answered, do you say this? I say to you, he continued, that the fasting which you think you observe is not a fasting, but I will teach you what is a full and acceptable fasting to the Lord. Listen, he continued, God does not desire such an empty fasting, for fasting to God in this way will do nothing for a righteous life, but offer to God a fasting of the following kind. Do no evil in your life and serve the Lord with a pure heart. Keep his commandments, walking in his precepts, and let no evil desire arise in your heart, and believe in God. If you do these things, and fear him, and abstain from every evil thing, you will live unto God. And if you do these things, you will keep a great fast, and one acceptable before God. Chapter 2 Hear the similitude which I am about to narrate to you relative to fasting. A certain man had a field and many slaves, and he planted a certain part of the field with a vineyard, and selecting a faithful and beloved and much valued slave, he called him to him and said, Take this vineyard which I have planted, and stake it until I come, and do nothing else to the vineyard, and attend to this order of mine, and you shall receive your freedom from me. And the master of the slave departed to a foreign country. And when he was gone, the slave took and staked the vineyard. And when he had finished the staking of the vines, he saw that the vineyard was full of weeds. Then he reflected, saying, I have kept this order of my master. I will dig up the rest of this vineyard, and it will be more beautiful when dug up. And being free of weeds, it will yield more fruit, not being choked by them. He took, therefore, and dug up the vineyard, and rooted out all the weeds that were in it. And that vineyard became very beautiful and fruitful, having no weeds to choke it. And after a certain time, the master of the slave and of the field returned, and entered into the vineyard. And seeing that the vines were suitably supported on stakes, and the ground moreover dug up, and all the weeds rooted out, and the vines fruitful, he was greatly pleased with the work of his slave and calling his beloved son, who was his heir, and his friends, who were his counselors, he told them what orders he had given his slave, and what he had found performed. And they rejoiced along with the slave at the testimony which his master bore to him. And he said to them, I promised this slave freedom if he obeyed the command which I gave him. And he has kept my command, and done besides a good work to the vineyard, and has pleased me exceedingly. In return, therefore, for the work which he has done, I wish to make him co-heir with my son, because, having good thoughts, he did not neglect them, but carried them out. With this resolution of the master, his son and friends were well pleased, that the slave should be co-heir with the son. After a few days, the master made a feast, and sent to his slave many dishes from his table. And the slave received the dishes that were sent him from his master took of them which was sufficient for himself, and distributed the rest among his fellow slaves. And his fellow slaves rejoiced to receive the dishes, and began to pray for him, that he might find still greater favor with his master for having so treated them. His master heard all these things that were done, and was again greatly pleased with his conduct. And the master again, calling together his friends and his son, reported to them the slave's proceeding with regard to the dishes which he had sent him. And they were still more satisfied that the slave should become co-heir with his son. Chapter 3 I said to him, Sir, I do not see the meaning of these similitudes, 
nor am I able to comprehend them unless you explain them to me. I will explain them all to you, he said, and whatever I shall mention in the course of our conversations I will show you. Keep the commandments of the Lord, and you will be approved, and inscribed amongst the number of those who observe his commands. And if you do any good beyond what is commanded by God, you will gain for yourself more abundant glory, and will be more honored by God than you would otherwise be. If, therefore, in keeping the commandments of God, you do, in addition, these services, you will have joy if you observe them according to my command. I said to him, Sir, whatsoever you enjoin upon me, I will observe, for I know that you are with me. I will be with you, he replied, because you have such a desire for doing good. And I will be with all those, he added, who have such a desire. This is fasting, he continued, and is very good, provided the commandments of the Lord be observed. Thus then shall you observe the fasting which you intend to keep. First of all, be on your guard against every evil word and every evil desire and purify your heart from all the vanities of this world. If you guard against these things, your fasting will be perfect. And you will do also as follows. Having fulfilled what is written, in the day on which you fast, you will taste nothing but bread and water. And having reckoned up the price of the dishes of that day which you intended to have eaten, you will give it to a widow or an orphan or to some person in want, and thus you will exhibit humility of mind, so that he who has received benefit from your humility may fill his own soul and pray for you to the Lord. For if you observe fasting as I have commanded you, your sacrifice will be acceptable to God, and this fasting will be written down, and the service thus performed is noble and sacred and acceptable to the Lord. These things, therefore, shall you thus observe with your children in all your house, and in observing them you will be blessed. And as many as hear these words and observe them shall be blessed. And whatsoever they ask of the Lord, they shall receive. Chapter 4 I prayed him much that he would explain to me the similitude of the field, and of the master of the vineyard, and of the slave who staked the vineyard, and of the stakes, and of the weeds that were plucked out of the vineyard, and of the son, and of the friends who were fellow counselors. For I knew that all these things were a kind of parable. And he answered me and said, You are exceedingly persistent with your questions. You ought not, he continued, to ask any questions at all. For if it is needful to explain anything, it will be made known to you. I said to him, Sir, Whatsoever you show me and do not explain, I shall have seen to no purpose, not understanding its meaning. In like manner also, if you speak parables to me and do not unfold them, I shall have heard your words in vain. And he answered me again, saying, Every one who is the servant of God and has his Lord in his heart, asks of him understanding and receives it, and opens up every parable. And the words of the Lord become known to him which are spoken in parables. But those who are weak and slothful in prayer hesitate to ask anything from the Lord. But the Lord is full of compassion and gives without fail to all who ask him. But you, having been strengthened by the holy angel, and having obtained from him such intercession, and not being slothful, why do not you ask the Lord understanding and receive it from him? I said to him, Sir... Having you with me, I am necessitated to ask questions of you, for you show me all things and converse with me. But if I were to see or hear these things without you, I would then ask the Lord to explain them. Chapter 5 I said to you a little ago, he answered, that you were cunning and obstinate in asking explanations of the parables, but since you are so persistent, I shall unfold to you the meaning of the similitudes of the field and of all the others that follow, that you may make them known to everyone. Hear now, he said, and understand them. The field is this world, and the Lord of the field is he who created and perfected and strengthened all things, and the Son is the Holy Spirit. And the slave is the Son of God. 
And the vines are this people, whom he himself planted. And the stakes are the holy angels of the Lord, who keep his people together. And the weeds that are plucked out of the vineyard are the iniquities of God's servants. And the dishes which he sent him from his table are the commandments which he gave his people through his Son. And the friends and fellow counselors are the holy angels who were first created. And the master's absence from home is the time that remains until his appearing. I said to him, Sir, all these things are great and marvelous and glorious things. Could I, therefore, I continue, understand them? No, nor could any other man, even if exceedingly wise. Moreover, I added, explain to me what I am about to ask you. Say what you wish, he replied. Why, sir, I asked, is the Son of God in the parable in the form of a slave? Chapter 6 Here, he answered, the Son of God is not in the form of a slave, but in great power and might. How so, sir? I said, I do not understand. Because, he answered, God planted the vineyard, that is to say, he created the people, and gave them to his Son, and the Son appointed his angels over them to keep them. And he himself purged away their sins, having suffered many trials and undergone many labors, for no one is able to dig without labor and toil. He himself then, having purged away the sins of the people, showed them the paths of life by giving them the law which he perceived from his father. You see, he said, that he is the Lord of the people, having received all authority from his father. And why the Lord took his son as counselor and the glorious angels regarding their heirship of the slave, listen, the holy pre-existent spirit that created every creature, God made to dwell in flesh, which he chose. This flesh, accordingly, in which the Holy Spirit dwelt, was nobly subject to that spirit, walking religiously and chastely, in no respect defiling the spirit, and accordingly, after living excellently and purely, and after laboring and cooperating with the spirit, in having in everything acted vigorously and courageously along with the Holy Spirit, he assumed it as a partner with it. For this conduct of the flesh pleased him, because it was not defiled on the earth while having the Holy Spirit. He took, therefore, as fellow counselors, his son and the glorious angels, in order that this flesh, which had been subject to the body without fault, might have some place of tabernacle, and that it might not appear that the reward of its servitude had been lost, for the flesh that had been found without spot or defilement, in which the Holy Spirit dwelt, will receive a reward. You have now the explanation of this parable also. Chapter 7 I rejoice, sir, I said, to hear this explanation. Here, again he replied, keep this flesh pure and stainless, that the spirit which inhabits it may bear witness to it, and your flesh may be justified. See that the thought never arise in your mind that this flesh of yours is corruptible, and you misuse it by any act of defilement. If you defile your flesh, you will also defile the Holy Spirit. For if you defile your flesh and spirit, you will not live. And if anyone, sir, I said, has been hitherto ignorant before he heard these words, how can such a man be saved who has defiled his flesh? Respecting former sins of ignorance, he said, God alone is able to heal them, for to him belongs all power. But be on your guard now, and the all-powerful and compassionate God will heal former transgressions. If for the time you come to defile not your body nor your spirit, for both are common and cannot be defiled, the one without the other, keep both therefore pure, and you will live unto God.